hop, hop straight into this, y'all, because it's going to be good. The topic for the month is damage assessment. Damage assessment. I know some of y'all are thinking like, man, what in the world are we talking about? Damage assessment. Sound like somebody got in a, a car wreck or something. <laughs> and and actually, that's a, a car wreck actually is a great analogy to describe a damage assessment is with your relationship. Because basically, we know whenever you get in a car wreck, right, they got the insurance people. That serious, they send out an adjuster, an appraiser to come out, look at the car. Mm -hmm. they, da they assess the damage that has occurred because of the wreck. So, and when that happens, they determine according to the damage what needs to be done to rectify the situation. Mm -hmm. So some cars, they they just got little fender benders, they just need to spray some paint on the bend, on the fender, get it back on the road. Some cars, they total completely out and they can never be driven again. And it's the same way with our relationships. So after we break up with individuals or we have breakups or failed relationships, we want to do a damage assessment and see exactly how we are feeling, how we are holding up after the breakup. Because yeah. some damage has occurred. Anytime that you've been in a meaningful relationship, I don't care how long it's been, if it's been, if it was meaningful to you, there's going to be some type of damage done. Some damage is going to be greater than others, right. depending on the time invested into the relationship, the amount of investment put into the relationship. The damage is going to differ. But we need to assess that damage because a lot of us, what we're doing is we're getting, we're going through relationship after relationship after relationship. We, we're breaking up with individuals. Our feelings are hurt. Um, our perception uh, of ourselves changes. But we're not assessing any of this. We're just carrying the damage from the previous relationship over into the next relationship. And we're treating everything like a fender bender. We just slap a, slap some makeup on. Look, some of us may cut our hair. It's a new me. I got a new look. Some of us go to the gym, lose a little bit of weight, and now we ready. And now we ready to live our best life with the next person. But and we're treating the breakup like it's a fender bender when it's been a to the car has been totaled. So we're we're riding down the interstate in a total vehicle and wondering why our relationships not working out how we want them to work. Right. It's because the vehicle that you're using, it, it's not going to get you to your uh, expected destination. Because, look, I can't drive I can't drive a total car from here to, to New Orleans. Right. So and we're in Atlanta. Right. we in Atlanta. <laughs> I can't expect to get in a total car and ride it to New Orleans and, and, and think I'm going to get there safely, right. arrive safely. But we do that with our emotions and with our feelings and our relationships. We, we're driving these totaled cars and expecting to arrive at the destination of a committed exclusive marriage or relationship. And that just doesn't happen. So today we are going to talk about and teach you all the import, what is the importance of basically doing a self audit. Mm -hmm. It's basically right. doing a self audit of your, of your feelings, your emotions, where you are physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally after a breakup. Mm -hmm. right. Cause a lot of times, our, our perceptions of ourselves have changed. These are the type of questions we need to be asking. How do I feel right now? Mm -hmm. We broke up, okay, do I view myself the same? Because sometimes relationships are how you looking at yourself sideways, like, man, what is wrong with me? Right. Do I view relationships and love diff in a different uh, light because of this breakup? There's, these are the type of questions that we have to be asking ourselves after we break up. And in our KLS formula, it's it's basically four steps of the relationship that we go through when we coach you through. And the very first part of that formula is the preparation phase. Right. And we go through that phase um, really no matter where you are when you when you reach out to us, right? Because we have a ton of people that will reach out to us and say, hey, I'm ready to start dating. I need help. Like, what do I do? And a lot of the times we find that we have to circle, we have to circle back to that preparation phase before we even jump into the dating phase so that right. we can get all of those internal things together before you jump out into the dating world because it's right. just going to be way more beneficial to you yeah. um, than just jumping out there and us giving you advice on how do you date when you're out there. We need to get you in a we solid place. We got to lay that place. foundation. Yes. Because the preparation phase is the foundation right. that you're going to build this healthy 
lasting and fulfilling relationship that right. you desire. But you can't build that if you haven't laid mm -hmm. that foundation. Yeah, and, and the preparation phase maybe take longer for other people, you know, take longer for you or, or others. It just depends, but we, we like to make sure that you go through this step so that we can give you the best possible foot forward in the dating world once you are launched back into it. Right, remember, mm -hmm. healthy people create healthy relationships. Yes. So you can total it out, people can't create a, a healthy relationship. It can't. Right. So. Okay, so damage assessment. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, Daryl, I want you to talk about some negative impacts of like not doing a damage assessment. Like, How mm -hmm. can that affect you and your relationships going forward? Well, I think one of the things we kind of hit on it earlier, negative, it, the negative impact, the biggest impact um, that it's going to have is you're going to take damaged goods into your new relationships. Anytime that you don't take the time to sit down and, it's, and perform a self audit and assess the damage of what you've done. I can give you a great example. Um, and this is a personal example for myself, man. Like I literally... High school, and this is how far it can go back, y'all. High school, literally in high school. My first little love, you know, broke my little heart, cheated on me, hurt my little feelings, right? And literally from that day forward and from high school for years, I'm talking about years down the line, I was never faithful to an, or another woman after that for a long, long time. Um... And that was because I had never, nobody ever really sat down and taught me. A lot of people were like, it's just little puppy love, da 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 da. But anytime you're in a meaningful relationship, I don't care how old you are, if it's in a meaningful relationship, it's going to impact you. Um, but nobody ever sat me down, and I never went through this process that we're trying to teach you all today of sitting down and seeing. She, that girl cheating on me and hurting my feelings, breaking my little heart at the time, it really hurt my feelings. It really changed the way that I even viewed women it really changed the way that i even handled women because i had never cheated on a girl before up until then and then after that i had cheated. i pretty much cheated on everybody i met i was with after that for for a long time y'all a long from time high school to now all the way from high school well, right now, all the way from high school yeah not <laughs> not, not i ain't cheating on no damn before. but yeah that's the end that's the type of end that's the type of impact that breakups can have on us and look we I'm talking about something away from high school. So imagine some of the things that you guys are carrying and the baggage that we're carrying all the way, could be all the way from high school or, or previous before that. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important. And then we're wondering why, man, I have these negative traits or I can tell you seeing these negative traits show up in my uh, relationships. And it may be from some stuff that happened way back a long time ago. It may be just from your previous relationship or it may be way before that. But that's why it's so important to have these conversations, not with anybody else, but with yourself. Your, a damage assessment is done with yourself. You have to sit down and open up to yourself, pull the curtains back on yourself and reveal yourself to you. Mm -hmm. To you, you gotta ask yourself these questions and be honest with yourself. How do I, like, if I was knowing what I know now, back, back in high school when this girl broke my heart, I would've sat down and been like, look, what is, how are you feeling right now? Like, how do you view yourself right now? Did this break up? Cause look, now, now I might have some insecurities. I feel like, hey man, shoot, she out here cheating on me, man. I must not have been doing something. I could have been, I could have looked at it that way. Or now that she's broken up with me, how do I even view women? It changed my whole perception of women, man. Women ain't no good. They out here cheating on people. They don't care about, about dudes' feelings, that type of thing. And. And if we never sit down and expose that to ourselves, do you see how that how that type of thinking, mm -hmm. even though we don't consciously think that like that, but it dictates it dictated my situations and my choices for a long time. I never sat down and said, "Man, I'm gonna just cheat on every chick I meet, I ever meet, just because she hurt my heart." Mm -hmm. But subconsciously, they really that's really what I was doing. She hurt my feelings, so I ain't look. I ain't worried about being serious with none of these other chicks. Right. Yeah. And a lot of us are treating situations like that that we're in now. We're subconsciously dealing and handling our current relationships in a way based off some past hurt and damage that we never took that we never took the time to take care of. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, 
you know, it's real, it's harsh to say all of this stuff and it sounds crazy and it sounds like, you know, like, why do I have to do this? But it's really important because not only, um, Daryl spoke to you guys about like how it could negatively impact your relationships going forward, but doing a damage assessment, what that does is when you're going, when you're going forward, right. And you're back into the dating world and you've done this damage assessment and you figured out some of the things that trigger you, some of the things that may have affected you from a previous relationship. Now you are going out into the dating world with your, your best foot forward, because now you know what triggers you, you know, um, what type of person that you want to, you know, deal with, date, um, and you know what type of person that you can't deal with. Right. And you know what type of person you can't deal with. And so what that does is, um, it, it basically, it will help you shorten your dating, your dating life, right? You won't be wasting your time with people that aren't going to be good for you. Um, and you know how to deal with situations once you're in a relationship as well. And you know how to treat people going forward. And I'll give you guys an example for me. Um, the, and you guys will hear me talk about this relationship probably a lot. Um, because it, it was a relationship that, um, pretty much triggered and birthed the, the KLS formula. So, um, the person that I was dating before I met Daryl, um, in a, in a long-term relationship with that person didn't work out. And I thought that that was supposed to be the person that I was going to marry. But once we, um, ended our relationship, I realized that there were a lot of things in that relationship that I weren't doing, I wasn't doing well. There were things that I was, um, that I was holding on to and I thought that I wanted. So for example, I made a lot of my decisions, my life decisions based on that relationship, right? So one of my dreams when I left college was that I wanted to move to New York and I wanted to become this big, you know, fashion merchandising executive. And I had an opportunity to move to New York. And because I was still in this relationship, I decided not to move there um, because, um, he, he wasn't going anywhere and I didn't want to move to a different location without him. So I made that huge life decision and ended up not going to New York. I went on a completely different career Wait, let path. Me ask you this. Let me ask you this thing. Like what was in you, what happened to you or what was in you that would allow you to put your dream to the side for a relationship? Well, I felt like um, that I couldn't do it alone. Like I was, I was nervous to move on to something that grand by myself. And was so, there was there a reason why you felt like you couldn't do it alone? Um, was that something stemming yeah, from your childhood? It was. It what? was probably. It was likely something stemming from my childhood. So I grew up with two sisters. So I always had a house full of people, and also just the lifestyle that we lived. We weren't. We weren't super rich. Like I never. Um, was one of those people that could, I, when I went to college, I had to go to college based off all my student loans and grants. My parents couldn't help me with anything. So making really major life decisions like that was tough for me if I was doing it by myself. And I just felt like I wasn't the type of person that was, that had the ability to do those type of things because of the background I came from. Like, how can I move to a big city by myself and, you know, I have no financial help. Like, I don't know anybody there. Um, you know, this right. is not what I'm supposed to be doing because this is not the person that, you know, I have always been. Right. right? And that's the point I want. You you said a point right there. That's the point mm -hmm. I want to bring out. What a damage assessment does, it exposes you to you. Right. It tells you who you are and why you do things the way that you do it. Um and it don't necessarily have to, it doesn't always come from past failed relationships. Mm -hmm. In Dominique's case, it was just her upbringing. Right. So when you're doing these damage assessments, we want you to be completely open and honest with yourself about your whole entire life, not just your failed relationships, mm -hmm. but be open and ask yourself questions about, we want you to figure out why do you do what you do? Right. Oh, look, look in the mirror and expose yourself to yourself and tell yourself and figure out why do I do what I do? Right. That's basically the point of what we, we trying to make. But yeah, you can go ahead. Absolutely. And then, you know, knowing that about myself, I realized, well, how am I, how am I, I have all these big goals and dreams and I feel like I can't do it for myself. But in reality, like at the end of the day, I'm all I got, right? And I'm not living the life that I said that I wanted to live. And so once that relationship ended, I realized like at this point now, I got to get my life together. I got to figure out what I want 
Um, I got to be bold enough to go out there and do it on my own. And that actually helped me get to a point where I was actually, I started living the life I said I wanted to live. I wanted to, you know, I, I ended up moving away. I went to move to Atlanta by myself, no friends, no family. I got a job up here. And then at the time I was doing like, I was blogging. So I engulfed myself in the blogging world. I was meeting all different types of people. I was doing a lot of different things that I didn't think that I would, able, would ever be able to do. And then I was traveling. I was just doing like everything I had on my goals list, I was doing at the time. And I was living so happily and so freely in myself and living in my full authentic authenticity that when it came to dating, it made it a lot easier for me to move on from people that were wasting my time. Right. It made it a lot easier for me to not entertain people that were not the type of person that could be that could be a part of the lifestyle that I created for myself. So it helped me like I y'all when I tell y'all I was cutting point. people all left and right because I was just like, look, this is what I said I'm going to do. If you're not fitting in this lane with me, sir, you need to move and you right. need to get out of the way. And I wasn't letting anybody mess up that space for me. So I had gotten to that point in my life by doing the self audit and figuring out what were those things that I was suffering from, not only from my previous relationship, but just life as, as a whole. Right. And I mean, y'all, when I tell you it worked, and at the time I didn't even realize that it, that's what I was doing, but that's right. what I was doing. Right. And within a short amount of time, I ended up beating Daryl. And true. here we you are. Know, and then I couldn't get rid of it. And I, <laughs> but at the end of the day, which we are, the point we're trying to make is you have to embrace who you are, the good and the bad. Because when you embrace the good and the bad, you know yourself. The key, right. the key to being able to connect your life to, to another individual's life, which is what you're looking to do when you're talking about being in a committed, exclusive relationship. The key to being able to do that is to know who you are and where you're trying to go. Because now once you really know yourself, the things that trigger you, you know your weaknesses, your insecurities, you know your strengths, you're, a you're now able to pick a person for one that's going to be able to cover your insecurities, your weaknesses. They have the skill set, the, the capacity, all that type of stuff to help you with your in insecurities and then as well help you get to where you're trying to go. But knowing yourself is key when it comes to dealing with another individual. So because I know that I am this way, because I know that I am a um, very needy and affectionate person, boom, I can now, I am now going to handle and treat my relationship with Dominique in a way that I'm going to be able, I have to be able to present that to her in a way that for one, she's going to be able to receive it mm -hmm. and then create an environment where she's able to produce and give me what I need. Right. But you can't do that when you don't know yourself. If you've never sat down and exposed yourself to yourself right yeah so i know we threw like a ton of information at y'all and y'all may have a thousand questions right so what we want you guys to do is make sure that all right now all the questions you have from this coaching call yeah. um when we get on our our monthly live call that's going to be the time that you will have the opportunity to ask us any questions that you have about this topic or any topic that you have at the moment right um, and feel free to make sure you, we had a community we had a community, the private group that you have access to. Drop your questions in there. If you have a question before we get on the call, feel free to drop your question in there. Me and Dominique are always in there, available to you all to answer any questions that you have. We'll be throwing questions and things out to you all in there as well. So y'all make sure you're utilizing the community, the private, fa not the Facebook group. It's not on Facebook. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, no, it's sorry. It's right. a private group. Listen through our own stuff. We used to have a private Facebook group. That's why I said that. <laughs> but anyway, y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about. Go in there and use the, uh, the the community. Utilize that and make sure you're getting what you need from us. Right. And we also want to quickly remind you guys that we do offer one-on-one um, -on -one coaching sessions, 30 right. minutes or an hour that you can book with us. If you have any specific topics that you need help with and you want us to coach you through, don't, feel free to reach out to us and schedule a 30 or an hour consultation with us. We'll have links within um, your, your, library, on your library on there where you can uh, schedule those calls with us. So always feel free to do that as well. 
right? Because so, yeah. we know we are. This is a safe environment that we can discuss everything with, and everybody in here trying to go for the same thing, and it's all love. Yes. But look, at the end of the day, we know sometimes you just don't want everybody to know your business. Right. So look, that's <laughs> when you can just hit us up one on one, and we got mm -hmm. y'all. We promise, love. We appreciate y'all time. We know you got something out of this. We can't wait to hear the questions and your comments about the video. We'll see y'all look on on the live video. Y'all be cool. All right, y'all. See you later.